Marketing, week one. This is the foundation week, and we're going to cover two chapters worth of content to get you started in understanding what marketing is, what marketing represents, and some of the fundamental ideas. So first of all, the thing to understand about marketing as a research and practice area is that it's a living discipline. We are always exposed to the effects of marketing and consequently, some of the technical and trade elements that you're going to learn across the course of the subject or the marketing major will be things that you are experiencing in day-to-day -day life. In particular, advertising, communication, and consumer behavior all are heavily embedded in our lived experiences of the world. So what is marketing as a technical term? A lot of people will have their own worldviews and interpretations of what marketing represents, and many of those worldviews will basically focus on one small portion of it. The American Marketing Association is the official definition that we use for this course. There is the Chartered Institute of Marketing's definition from the UK, but for us, the 2017 American Marketing Association definition Marketing is the activity, set of institutions, and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Now this definition was ratified, was originally created around 2007, ratified in 2013, reapproved in 2017. The Americans have liked this one, so they've stuck with it. But what does it mean? That's what the words marketing is. Well, marketing is, in this case, a set of activities. And marketing is something that you do. Marketing is a set of institutions. Marketing is part of the firm. So you have a marketing department, or you have a marketing officer, or you have someone whose role and marketing is a set of processes. We are going to focus on the activity and the processes across the course of this subject. And a lot of the activities that we're going to get you to do inside the tutorial or the lecture are around understanding some of the marketing thought processes and decision-making processes. As this is an introductory course, we're also just saying here they exist and some of the details will be covered in later classes. So the second aspect is marketing is about creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging. A lot of people see marketing as just communications. It's the high profile arm of the sector. It's the one that you can see because that's its purpose. However, the functional value of marketing is in our understanding of the needs and wants of a target audience and working to provide something that meets some, many, or most of those needs, and to produce it in a way that it's valuable to us, so we as an organization continue, and it's valuable to our target audience. So this is the idea of exchanging the offerings that have value. This is about us being paid for the work we do, or getting some benefits from what we contribute. And lastly, marketing is a broader area. It's about the customer clients, and these are two, potentially two separate entities, or they're the one person, or one entity. A customer is someone who pays the money, a client is someone who uses the product. So whenever you're using something that someone else has provided for you, you're the client. When you've paid the money, you're the customer. Partners are the other people involved in the transactions, these can be members of the supply line, they can be wholesalers, retailers, manufacturers, distributors, and lastly, society at large. Marketing is no longer just about what happens between the firm and the customer. We acknowledge and accept we have a broader role to play in both the overall social cultural context and as a societal force. 
So the key ideas in this is that marketing can help make something that has value. Value is fundamentally subjective. There are many, many definitions of value and we will encounter quite a few across the semester. But for us, an offering that has value, what people value is subjective and to them. We create something, we communicate that value, how to use it, that it exists, its purpose, its point, its price. We communicate that to that audience. Then we are responsible for delivering that value. So one of the aspects that makes marketing different from a lot of other areas is that it's our responsibility both to make the sale and to make the delivery of value. And lastly, the exchange. So something of value must be swapped for something else of value. Now it can be likes for loyalty, it can be uh, economic, it can be money, it can be non-economic. There are a range of different ways that the transaction can take place. But if there's no exchange, there's no marketing. And if there's no value offer, there's no marketing. So the core role of marketing is in fact to facilitate the transaction or relationship between the firm and the market. So let's talk a bit about the role of marketing and what marketing does. And these are key ideas, the idea that we create or help create value. Now the engineers will say, we're the ones who make the products and we're the ones who come back and say, well, yes, but what does your product do and who's it doing it for? If we can go to an engineering side or the product creation side and say, here's a set of needs that the market has, the market has a need for off-site, off-campus, pre-recorded videos, we should make videos for them. And this is where we come into the idea about satisfying customer needs and wants. But it's an important thing to understand here is that when we talk about satisfying needs and wants, we also do so from the idea of within the limits of what the firm is prepared to provide. So you want to be able to create something that is seen by a market to be valuable, is valuable to the market because it does something. An exchange takes place that's valuable where you give that value to them, they give something valuable back to you, usually money. And to do so, we're gonna use the marketing mix. The four elements here, product, price, promotion, and place. And those elements are elements that we control but are also influenced by the world around us. So we have this idea of the marketing stakeholders, the people who we influence and can influence us during the whole of the marketing transaction. So let's go through a couple of the key concepts, a couple of the fundamentals. The big one that you're just going to need to know is the four P's of marketing, the pillars of marketing, product, price, place, promotion. I always sequence it as product first, price second, promotion last, place in between. Because if you don't have a product, if you don't have something that you're offering to a market, then there's no purpose to the rest of what you're doing. A misunderstanding of marketing is the idea that we're just promotion and that you can, oh, we'll just communicate a thing, we'll just, you know, put spin on it. Put Without there being a thing of value, without there being a transaction, there is no purpose to marketing. We exist on the basis of offers that have value, those are products. We incur a cost to the consumer in order for them to acquire that value, and it's time, it's money, it's effort, Watching this video, studying this course, there is an exchange of value. But that exchange of value is coming out of price. It's coming out of the price of time. Place is where you can reach out and either meet the customer or the customer can come to you or your products can go to the customer. And these first three are put in that order because when you get to communication, when you get to promotion, you need to be able to explain to the market what's the offer where do they find it and how much is it going to cost them? 
If you don't know those three question, those three elements, there's no point promoting. The second key concept that you are going to deal with is the concept of value. As a marketer, value exists as a completely subjective object. Value is in the eye of the beholder. What is valued by the beholder is what the value offer is. Now there are points in time that we are going to see value offers that are not for us. We're not the target market, so we look at it and go, oh, I don't understand that, or that movie isn't for me, therefore that movie is bad. Nope, that movie wasn't a value offer for you, you don't find value from it, therefore you're not the target market, off you go. So the idea of marketing is that we want to find a match between what we can create as an organization and what the market wants and is willing to trade for. So fundamentally, value exists as a set of offerings. It can be physical objects, physical goods. It can be intangible services. It can be conceptual ideas. Even things like brands, memes, these are ideas that have value. If they provide cultural cachet, if they provide amusement, entertainment, even they make you angry, that can be a form of exchange. An emotive response can be a value. So some things can be created in terms of value before their ability to drive people away, because then there is value to the person who is getting an exclusivity. Or there can be things that value is created by bringing people together. Value comes from being one of many in the collective, all wearing the same brand, all going same hat, same hat at each other. But fundamentally, the thing that is quite different in the marketing perspective is because it's subjective, if the value offer that we create is working for the customer, then that's good enough for us. We don't need it to be the value offer that, we don't need the value offer to be final from us. This is why we talk about it in terms of offerings that have value, the customer gets to make, create, and interpret the value in their own way. Now, I also want to quickly emphasize is that value versus price, it's very easy for this to get to be a bit of a crossover because the word value gets horribly overused in commerce. I believe there's something like 16 or 17 running definitions of it you'll encounter across your degree. Price for us is everything the buyer gives up. It's all the sacrifices that the buyer makes in exchange for the product. Value is what they perceive that they're going to get back from that exchange. This is why sometimes you'll be looking at, as a marketer, you'll be externally reviewing a value offer in a market going, I do not understand the price. I do not understand the pricing strategy. This seems very expensive and yet this is seen as a high value return. If that's the case then you're not the target market and you just need to understand the target market better if you want to actually address them. But value is what you get back. Price is what you have to give up. Another key concept that's fundamental to marketing uh, is the idea of exchange theory, and this is benefit for benefit. There are a couple of rules to exchange theory, is that there must be at least two parties. You cannot exchange with yourself, irrespective of what you can do in corporate law. There must be a gain to the transaction as perceived by both parties. Subjective gain, it doesn't have to be an objective gain. Exchange can be monetary or non-monetary. Uh, both can be present, either can be present. Something of value must be transferred in return for the receipt of something of value. And the whole thing through is that the perception of benefit is in the eye of the transactor. So 
an object that may have no material value, and I'm thinking here collectibles, I'm thinking here little plastic toys, I'm thinking here small objects from, your, from someone's childhood, may take on a large financial value. I mean, if you've ever looked at eBay and watched people bidding several hundred dollars for the last little plastic thing that finishes the, off their collection, the objective value of the plastic is non-existence, cents in the dollar. The subjective value is very high because it's the last piece of the puzzle. It will bring satisfaction, a complete collection, or it evokes a childhood memory. So all of the transaction, all of the exchange, the value, there must be a trade of value. And exchange theory gets quite complicated, but we'll stick with basic exchange theory to start with. Value for value, transaction, and all marketing is premised on exchange. Marketing is only present if there is exchange. Finally, this is a change in perspective. And we are in, 20, we're in the 2020s and this perspective change came about in the aughts. So around 2007, there was a bit of a sea change for marketing. Previous definitions of marketing from 1935, 1985, didn't think about society. Around 2004, the definition of marketing that was released talked about the uh, marketing having value in the exchange for, well, they left exchange out, but marketing being of value to customer and stakeholders. And stakeholders then became, in the 2007 and 2017 ratification, the customer, the client, the partner, and society at large. By reconceptualizing marketing as having a societal focus, that's why in Australia, in the marketing standards, the first standard of teaching marketing is that we are a societal force and a societal influence. That means we can be a societal influence for good or evil or neutral, but we're a societal force. We exist and we exert influence on more than just our direct customer. So we'll come across stakeholders, you'll see a lot of that later in your degree, and you'll start seeing the impact and start thinking there can be positive and negative impacts as well. Impact itself is a neutral term, so it always has to be loaded. If we run a marketing campaign that uh, promotes personal freedoms, uh, buy this cola, receive a freedom. Customers directly impacted. But the idea then is reinforcing individuality and why standing out from the pack is a good thing and you want to be an isolated individual who's just a free, free spirit, not bound by society. Well, society at large is getting a little bit of uh, impact there because your counterposition could be joining the pack, be part of society. We live in a society, we should all work together. We can sell products on that basis and society at large is going to have a different, there'll be a competing set of influences. Same way when we're looking at our partners, the sourcing of raw materials, where we get things manufactured, how we treat our retail staff. And may I make a big shout out to the Australian food industry for completely failing the bit where we pay people to do their jobs. But the raw material, to the manufacturer, to the retailer, to the customer, these are all points in the channels, and we'll deal with that in the distribution chapter, where we can influence an impact on a broader society. Where we choose to set up our manufacturing plants, whether we source locally or internationally. If we source locally, a certain economic benefit goes to the region, to the jobs in the local area, to the detriment of an international trading partner. If we work with an international trading partner, we're supporting another country and we're improving conditions over there, their economy is stronger. If their economy is stronger, perhaps they'll import from us. There are always trade-offs. There's no immediate something right, something wrong in very few circumstances. Okay, there are some very clear circumstances of 
illegality and immorality, but overall, marketing's purpose now is to be a societal force that's mindful as we transact with our customers, what impact are we having in a bigger scenario, bigger picture. So that's the fundamentals down. Let's talk a little bit now about marketing strategy. First thing I need you to understand about marketing strategy is we have an entire dedicated subject for it. So you're gonna get a quick strategy. It's a thing that exists. It's not your job to set a marketing strategy at the end of the subject. This is introduction to marketing. It is an overview. You do not become a marketer simply by doing intro any more than you become a certified practicing accountant by doing intro to accounting. But what we want you to, a couple of things we want you to understand is that marketing has a philosophy. There is, it is a business philosophy. So it's not a universally applied phenomena. Marketing as a business philosophy believes in the marketing orientation, which is think about the needs of the customer first, build in response, create in response to the needs of, identified needs of a market. We also have marketing as a strategic orientation and a tactical orientation. And here we're gonna give you the overview because there are several more subjects before you at least get a marketing major and can start thinking of yourself as a marketer. But let's talk a little bit about the purpose of a marketing strategy for which we have an entire dedicated subject. It's a sequence of connected parts. So across the course of introduction to marketing, we're going to introduce you to one of the fundamentals of the marketing mindset. And that is sequencing and recursive loops. Marketers, marketing fundamentally is an experiment and it's an experimental design. When we engage with the marketplace, we conduct an experiment. We change a variable, see what happens next, document the results, make a change to something else. So our sequencing here is we start with thinking, why, what is our purpose for engaging the audience? Why are we going to this market? And there are strategies around, and there's a marketing way to see that. We then start thinking, what's our target audience? Who is it we're going to address? And this is part of the marketing orientation, the marketing philosophy is the idea of customer orientation. The idea that there are key audiences to whom we want to address our efforts. Market segmentation is a philosophical worldview and a tactical and strategic worldview. We choose markets and we exclude other markets. We do not have a universal offer of value. There is nothing that is inherently valuable to all parties. And that's probably one of the hardest things to get used to is that in our strategic and our tactical, the target audience is paramount. Identifying a narrow group within a wider marketplace as to who we're going to address first, who we address second. We then, knowing our audience, start working towards creating things like the marketing mix, which are tailored to meet the specifics of that audience. Now, if you want to reach out to 15 to 17 year old males, you're going to have one target market that will be different to trying to reach 18 to 21 year old males, which will be different to trying to reach 22 to 25 year old males, which will be different from trying to reach the same target group in a different geographic location. So trying to reach a group of male high school students in Canberra, you can list the schools you can find them at, and you can find them by geographic location between certain hours of the day, certain weeks of the year. If you're after that same group, males 12 to 15 in Sydney, it's gonna be no use putting your ads up down in Canberra. If you're after a target market of 
young female purchasing power, 12 to uh, 14 year olds, you're gonna have one different set of outlets, you're gonna have a different set of interests. You're going to have a whole bunch of choices that you can make with your marketing mix based on who your audience is and a bit of a breakdown around them. So a strategy's idea, and the purpose of a strategy is, why do we reach it? Why do we wanna to go to this audience? Who is the audience we want to go to? Who's the most receptive audience? How will we get them to be receptive to us? And how do we make that an ongoing, successful, sustainable advantage? So I want to briefly talk about uh, engagement. I want to introduce you to a new friend who's going to become an old familiar friend. The Ansoft Matrix is our go-to strategy toolkit when you want to grow a market. Growth is not the universal thing. We do mar marketing's capable of more than just growth strategies. But at the beginning, we keep it basic, we keep it simple, and we talk about growth. Now it comes down to answering two questions. Are we making something, an offering that has value, that we already make? In which case, it's a current product or service. If you answer yes, that gives you the first column. If we say, nope, it's a new value offer, that's your second column. Your first row is, are we dealing with an audience we already have? In which case, if the answer is yes, first row. If the answer is no, second row. And this gives us four possible outcomes. If we are dealing with an audience that we've dealt with before, it's market penetration. We're selling more products to the people who already buy from us. If we've already dealt with this market and they're familiar to us, but we see that they've got needs we could meet, then we develop a product, we develop a new offer, product development. If we've already got a product and we're looking around for a market that could benefit from it, it's market development. And lastly, if we don't have a product, if we haven't got a market and we've just built a product, it's diversification, it's the hardest thing you can do in business, it's entrepreneurship in a box, and it's taking a new concept to a new market and saying, hi, buy our stuff. Or rather, hi, we think we've got a market fit. We think we can offer you something valuable. Now, I mentioned that marketing's not restricted to a growth-only mindset. There are always, strategically, three choices. You can grow a market, you can maintain a market, or you can retreat from that market. And the G. McKenzie finance matrix, the G matrix, I always refer to it as the G finance matrix. This little nine box matrix talks about the attractiveness of a sector and the relative strength that you have in that sector. And it gives you three choices, growth, maintain, or retreat. But it's nine boxes, so it's a more nuanced and richer strategy. You get to engage with that a little bit later in the, uh, in the marketing major. The key for you now is just to understand that marketing is capable of more than just growth. We can use marketing to maintain market share. We can use marketing to get rid of market share. We can use marketing to reduce growth to lower consumption. There are more choices than just simply growth only. So another key concept in strategy is going to be, we're going to spend a week on it, the target audience, really an important aspect here. Segmentation, targeting and positioning. It's three words you're going to get very familiar with in the course of your major. It's one of our central focuses here at the ANU is to get you used to the idea of, there are broad markets, we can divide them up into smaller, more responsive units, and we can address that smaller, more responsive unit. So you divide a market up into different segments, that gives you target markets. You then can split up that target market into receptive audiences, and then once you've picked your audience, you can create a sequence of strategies to address and engage those audiences. You're really looking to create the granularity, the narrow focus, to be able to make specific choices for identified groups of people who will respond well to your needs. And this is the fundamental philosophical view of marketing. 
we have target audiences, we address the needs of known customers, and we work to create something that is of value to a customer or a client. Now the strategy side, marketing mix shows up in strategy. It will also show up in tactics. The mix is one of our toolkits. It's pretty much a universal screwdriver. And what you're thinking about here as a decision is for that target audience, what's the value offer? How are we going to communicate to them? How are they going, to, what are they going to pay in terms of a price for consuming our product? And how are we going to reach them? So if you want to find a mid-30s married couple in southeast Queensland to sell products to, you're going to need to know where to find them for the distribution. So you're going to need to do your market segmentation and your market research. So the place is right. Married couple, no kids, high discretionary income, the price can be slightly higher. With kids, slightly lower because they've got less discretionary expenditure. All these become strategic decisions based on your target market. And the final part, sustainable competitive advantage. Strategy exists for a purpose. And there are four fundamentals which you can combine. Your competitive advantage is either loyalty, or it's not either, your competitive advantage can come from loyalty. Strong brand following, strong loyal customers, they will pay premiums to be part of the brand, they will, pro they will provide encouragement and incentive for others to join the brand, and they will also gatekeep the brand, which is not always a good thing. Efficient operations. Your competitive advantage comes from being better at what you do than your competitor. If you're both selling it for 10 bucks and you make it for seven and they make it for eight, you win on the transactions. If you're both making it for 10 bucks and you're selling at 15 and they're selling at 12, you're winning on the exchange as well because it's a better fit of perceived value. Product excellence is an interesting one because you are looking at greater perceived value or the brand itself, the logo, the, the meanings, the messages associated by consumption of this product sends a certain signal that people will pay for, that people are willing to be part of, or that you just hold the right spot in people's minds. You are the go-to selection. Your product is the first line of thought, first choice, because that's what they like. And lastly, location. This is the, uh, the Starbucks rule. Be where the audience wants you to be and be when the audience wants the product. So there are four possible ways to go to a competitive advantage and you can work them in combination. To retain loyal customers because you have the best fit. People are loyal to you because your product's good. Or you have loyal customers because you are really easy to find their loyalty they don't have to cross the street to get that coffee because you're on all four corners. Location, be where the audience wants you to be. Plus, loyal customers. Plus, you're making a coffee that's drinkable. Win scenario. So sustainable competitive advantage is a strategic mindset and something you go into a lot later in the marketing major because first of all, you need to be able to start understanding things around customers, which is the consumer behavior subject. Efficient operations, which is around the product, product excellence, which is around brand strategy and the whole value concept, location, which is around distribution. So one quick overview. In your learning objectives for the subject, you will see that there is the concept of the marketing plan. We want to introduce you to the idea that there is a plan and marketing is a plan to behavior. Marketing plans are difficult, complicated, and complex things that we want you to engage with when you get to the marketing strategy subject, once you've had an experience of the holistic whole view of marketing. So I'm gonna tell you now, this is a marketing plan. It exists. We're gonna teach you some of the fundamentals and core elements inside it, so that when you come through your next sequence of subjects, you are familiar with these 
elements and you can expand on your base of knowledge. At the end of Intro to Marketing, you won't be able to write a marketing plan that's in any way, shape or form detailed because you don't have the expertise yet. It's like the way we wouldn't expect you in, at the end of the first year of, uh, or first semester of an engineering major to build a bridge. We don't expect you to create a marketing plan. But what we will showcase and work you through is we're going to introduce you to the concept of segmentation, targeting, positioning. And we're going to interweave those concepts as they come up throughout the semester. We're also going to introduce you to product, the marketing mix, particularly value and value offer, price, financial and social, and place. Promotion has its own subject because promotion is a, again, a difficult task because it draws on segmentation and targeting positioning. It's about communicating the right message to the right markets. So you need to have a grounding and basics in segmentation. You need to know how to pick a market and target it. And you need to know how to locate your product offer inside that market and the mindsets of the customers in that market. So we hold out promotion to the side because promotion also works well with positioning and promotion can do value add to product. But at this point, for the semester, this is as much as you need to know about a marketing plan is planning exists, plans are a thing that marketers do and there's plans in the planning process and when you get asked the question in, the exam, in an exam, which is more important, plans of the planning process? It's a trick answer, the answer is both. So a quick recap, this is the fundamentals of marketing. There are a few key ideas that we're going to recur throughout the semester and throughout the major. Market segmentation, segmentation targeting positioning as a sequence of thoughts, because marketing is a process. The core key elements of marketing as a procedure, creation, communication, delivery, and exchange, and the four pillars of marketing, price, product, promotion, place. Those are your central ideas. Those are your key fundamentals. Across the course of the semester, we're going to expand upon these platforms, bring you in more details, bring you in more depth and nuance. Remembering, of course, that this is the overview. This is the intro. Welcome aboard. Enjoy the stay. If this is the only marketing subject you do, you'll walk out of here speaking basic marketing. If this is the first of your marketing major, you'll walk out of here knowing the fundamentals that you'll expand upon in other subjects.